In case you miss it, here's a sports animal rewind. Let's uh, bring in, talk some Tennessee Titans, get a Tennessee Titans report from Terry McCormick. Works really hard for TitanInsider.com, one of the best in the biz. Hey, Terry, Vince, and Evan here in, in Knoxville. How you doing, Terry? Doing good. How are you guys making it? Uh, we're good. Appreciate you pinch hitting for Mr. McFarland. Um, did you, did you, were you able to hear while you're on hold? Were you able to hear Chris Johnson? If so, what did you think of that, that soundbite? Well, yes, I was there yesterday when he said it live, and uh, – <laughs> I guess it's one of those things, the, some of the media folks, myself and some others, were talking about how every time Chris Johnson says, is asked about running for 2,000 yards again, he obviously says that he wants to do it, thinks he can do it. Uh, you know, not very many other people apparently think that he can because he hasn't come close since. But it's one of those situations where I guess you want the guy to be confident in himself, and he certainly doesn't lack for that. I guess... The biggest thing in that regard is, you know, people perceive Chris as a me first type of player when he makes those types of statements and he says he's just being honest and that if he gets those types of numbers, he feels like the Titans will be successful. He says, you know, he says he tries to keep the team goals first, but when people ask him about the personal goals, he's not going to shy away from it. I'm wondering, we're, we're kind of in mini camp season. What, what type of what can you glean from from the the type of stuff that's going to be going on for the next few weeks before the teams get really into the training camp and really the season is is on the brink? Is you know are, are the players just going through the motions or is this uh, can real stuff be actually accomplished during this time of year? Well, there's a lot of experimenting, a lot of installation, a lot of installing the new offense, uh, getting the new defense up to speed with uh, Greg Williams on board to help out there. So they're trying a lot of different things. A lot. It's going to be very competitive in training camp this year because this is a team that went out and between free agents and draft picks brought in more than 20 new faces to the roster uh, to come in and compete this season for roles on this team. And I think you're going to see a lot of those guys eager to prove themselves, either bouncing back from a, a subpar year themselves or uh, coming in wanting to make an, an impact right away as a new player, whether that be as a free agent or a draft pick. Plus, you got to realize this coaching staff kind of kind of knows that this is make or break for them, that they've got to sink or swim, and they would much rather swim. And so they're, they're pulling out all the stops, making all the changes, trying to get this roster set. So right now everything is kind of in flux, but it's actually a little more exciting than your usual uh, boring OTA where guys, as you said, just go through the motions. Visiting with Terry McCormick from TitanInsider.com, joining us here, part of the 24-7 Sports Network, the only NFL team site on the Sports Network. Uh, Terry, what about Justin Hunter? A lot of interest here from volunteers, fans, and Justin Hunter, but he has the hamstring injury. What are you hearing from the Titans or from your sources about how long Justin Hunter could be out? Justin said that uh, he might be able to come back next week for the mini camps, but I think the Titans may hold him out. They don't want to rush him into anything and have a minor hamstring tweak still bothering him when training camp rolls around at the end of July. So they're going to take it easy with him. They're going to get him as much work in the classroom as they can. If he feels like he's able to run around and maybe do some individual work, that's fine. But they don't want to overexert him right now and run the risk of making that hamstring worse. Now, Justin says he wants to be out there, and I certainly believe that because he's a rookie with a lot to prove and uh, a lot to learn. So I think uh, it's, it's a situation where the Titans would rather be cautious and rather be careful with Justin Hunter. But Justin Hunter, uh, looking at you know his opportunity, probably wants to be out there as soon as possible. Terry, what's your early impressions on Justin Hunter, the draft pick, and also in getting a chance to talk to him? Well, he seems like he uh, has a good head on his shoulders, uh, You know, certainly a talented kid, and I think uh, – the Titans drafted him basically uh, as a guy that they feel like has a lot of upside, a lot of potential. They had a first-round grade on him in the draft. And uh, he's one of those guys where, you know, with all rookies, whatever you get from him in year one is probably a bonus. Now, Kenny Britt's in a contract year, so if they don't feel comfortable going with Kenny uh, and giving him another, either giving him a, a contract extension at the end of the year or even franchising him, then, they feel like they've got a capable placement on board in Justin Hunter who could step in right away maybe in 2014 and be a starter for this team. 
Terry, when you look at this team, maybe the depth chart roster, you look at it, what positions do you think there are, there are battles, legitimate battles for positions where you don't feel like you can confidently fill in a starter? Where where are those battles? Well, I think there's some in the secondary where they're going to play and mix and match and have a lot of different coverages and things like that. Uh, right now they're looking at Tommy Campbell in place of Alteron Werner in a lot of packages uh, at cornerback because they're looking at running more man-to-man defense, and Tommy Campbell is really more of a bump-and-run corner, while Alteron Werner, who's even been getting a look at safety, is more of your your basic cover-two zone corner. I think uh, – What's, that's one of the battles that could shape up. The offensive line is certainly going to be interesting to see how that shapes up, not only for the starting spots, because I think they want Andy Levitri and Chance Warmack to win the starting guard spots, and they'll have every opportunity to do that, but also at the center spot where Fernando Velasco, who was the starter there for most of last year, will try to hold off uh, rookie Brian Schwinke. So that's just a couple of places where there's going to be some interesting battles. And then, uh, as we mentioned before, the wide receiver pecking order is going to be uh, interesting to follow that and see how it shakes out because you've got Kendall Wright who's been looking good. You've got Kenny Britt who has a lot to prove in the final year of his contract. And then, as we mentioned before, you've got Justin Hunter plus veteran Nate Washington. Uh, and it's, it's going to be interesting to kind of sort that all out and see who fits where. Terry, last thing with you. We appreciate your time. You uh, you mentioned simplifying the offense. Explain what that is and how that can benefit Jake Locker who is obviously has fewer excuses around him, if you can call it that. Uh, they've really set him up to, to succeed. Talk about that change in simplifying the offense. Well, I think the main thing that what they're doing for Jake and for everybody else, you know, maybe it's not, you know, the words, maybe the word is not simplifying, but I think it's playing to their strength. Mm-hmm. I think if, if you've got a guy who's particularly good at running a deep route, then maybe you allow him to do that more in the game. you got a guy who's good at running – Lamps or curls, and you, you put him in those situations with Jake Locker. He's comfortable with the short passes, short to intermediate passes. He's more comfortable throwing on the run, so they're going to roll out some things. They're going to let him use his legs a little bit, maybe even toss a little read option in there uh, once in a blue moon. And uh, they're going to let him do the things that he's the most comfortable with and then work on and try and improve the other things. And I think that's what you're seeing going on all around the league. When when Colin Kaepernick and Russell Wilson and Robert Griffin the third, those type guys were thrown into the fray early last year, the team, their teams didn't try to make them learn everything that they had on the offense. They, t- they took what they could do, tailored their skills to fit their own system, and then that's how they had success. And I think that's what the Titans are going to have to do with Jay Clocker. Don't, don't make him fit your system. Make your system fit him, and I think that's exactly what they're trying to do. Terry, great insight and info. Appreciate you filling in for Darren today. You can follow Terry on Twitter. It's T-E-R-R-Y-M-C-13 or Titan Insider 247.